So here we are. Uh, I've been talking to you about my ministry and the walk and, and what God's been doing in our lives and our walk. And so I want to I want to start at a basic foundational truth because unless you understand this truth, you're not going to understand why God is working the way He's working on the earth today. It's because He's here. He's not off someplace. Jesus came to establish the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, on the earth today. That's why he came here and shed his blood. So I want to go to the scripture, and, and I don't. this is not my word. This is not what I'm saying. This is what he says, and it's what he says that, that really counts. Okay? So I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, and then we'll discuss that. In John, the third chapter, the 16th verse, For God so greatly loved, didn't say he hated, didn't came to judge, so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he gave up, he even gave up his only begotten, unique son, so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish, come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. Now, it's very, very important that we understand that wording. I'm using an Amplified Bible, which gives me the alternate Greek and Hebrew. But you will notice that every Bible says that same thing. He didn't come to condemn the world. He didn't come to judge the world. He came that the world might have life. Now watch verse 17. John 3, verse 17. For God did not send the Son into the world in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, okay, the, to pass sentence on the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through him. So Jesus came to bring salvation to us. And that, that word we'll cover later, but that word salvation means a lot of things. It doesn't, doesn't mean, well, now you're saved and when you die you're going to heaven. No, that word salvation is a very, very important word. It means long life, peace. It means a blessing. So we're gonna, I'm going to discuss it later, but I want you to understand, He came that the whole world, not just the people in it, but the whole world might be saved. That even means the creatures and the, and the firma and everything else, because it all fell to destruction when Adam and Eve blew it. So God wants to restore this whole world into the fullness of His kingdom. And we really need to understand that. We need to come to that place where we do. He who believes in Him, who clings to, trusts in, relies on Him, is not judged. He who trusts in Him never comes up for judgment. For Him there is no rejection, no condemnation. He incurs no damnation. But he who does... Now, that's, if, if he does this, if he confesses with his mouth that Jesus is Lord, he believes in his heart, God raised him from the dead, as it says in Romans, he said there's no judgment for him. There's no condemnation for him. He who believes that this is why he came. The scripture says in, in Romans, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, that's, that's what salvation is. It's confessing Jesus with my mouth, believing it in my heart. That's what salvation is about. So here he's saying to us, but he's saying, this is your way, this is your way into heaven. This is your way into the kingdom. But he also says the other part. Now watch closely. But he who does not believe, huh, cleave to, rely on, trust in him, in Christ, Jesus, is judged already. I love that wording. He said, I'm not judging him. He's self-condemned. He's self-judged. Because he refuses to follow the, what I laid out for him, what the Father God laid out. He has already been convicted and has already received his sentence because he has not believed in, trusted in, the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hallelujah. He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ's name. Wow! So nobody, nobody ever, ever needs to miss the kingdom of God. Nobody ever needs to miss being with God eternally. It's so simple as to confessing with your mouth that Jesus is in you, in you and, and asking Jesus to come into your heart 
and take over your life. Sure, you have to mean it. You have to want that. But if you do, it says that's what salvation is really all about. The basis of this judgment, this indictment, verse 19, this, of this indictment, hallelujah, the test by which men are judged, the ground for the sentence, lies in this. The light has come into the world, and people have loved darkness rather than and more than light, for their works, their deeds were evil. So God is saying to you and I, saying to every person that's listening to my voice, I'll not condemn you. I've given you a way out, and that way is my son, Jesus Christ, who hung on the cross, who shed his blood and died for you. And through that action, and by accepting that action as, your, as the substitute, you now have access and have entered into the kingdom of God. And that's really what God is always wanting to do. See, but you see, we, we, we want to figure it out religiously. We want to figure it out, well, theologically. And, well, yeah, but brother, it doesn't mean, really, well, I don't know. People say, well, baby, that's what baby baptism is. I don't know. I know one thing, that a baby doesn't know why it's being baptized. I mean, I just heard a pastor the other day say, oh, I don't remember my baptism. I was a baby. So I had to do it again. And, this, and in this particular denomination, they don't ever do that. But he said, I did. I wanted to be sure. You know? And so, to, I don't know about you, I don't remember when I was baptized. I know I was, because that's when they gave me my name. Okay? I don't know what that was all about. I, don't, I remember a little bit about my first communion. I remember a little bit about confirmation. Okay? But did I know what they meant? No, absolutely not. And so what I say to people is, don't you want to know? Don't you want to know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ really, really loves you? And the scripture says, He chose you. You have not shown me, chosen me, but I have chosen you. John, the 15th chapter, the 16th verse says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I have appointed you, I have planted you, that you might go forth and bear fruit, much fruit, free, large fruit, that the Father may be honored, honored and glorified. So ask yourself this question today. Do you want to know that you know that you know you're going to be spending eternity with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the All-Sufficient One, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and His Father and the Holy Spirit? And if you do, just ask Him right now, Jesus, come into my heart, take over my life, be my Lord and Savior. I can trust you, Jesus, and He will. God bless you until we come back together again. Amen, and amen, and amen.